All right, a little something about me because I definitely the case always is that uh, there's always a few people who don't know who I am. So before I begin, I'd like to tell a few something about me and my story, where I came from, so uh, you understand the speaker who's speaking. Basically, uh, I make money online by telling people how much money I make online. Okay? And uh, when it comes to making my line, making money online, I, I wrote the book on it. Literally, I wrote the book on it. You see, this is called Make Money Online. I wrote the book on it. <laughs> So and uh, I got a copy here. I'm going to be giving this away to somebody. So probably we'll do a business card draw at the end. Right. So that uh, book was published, I think, a couple of years ago. It went to Am it hit number one on Amazon the first week of release. I've been blogging since 2005. I've been a full-time internet marketer since 1998. I went up with the dot-com boom, went down with the dot-com crash, and I'm currently riding the second wave, the social media wave. My blog was started in December 2005. Uh, it's never made any money before when it first started, but today it averages about a thousand bucks a blog post. Every time I make a blog post, it makes about a thousand bucks. And that includes just posting a YouTube video or any, whatever one want to post. Uh, what, my blog is hosted on WordPress, wordpress.org. Uh, WordPress According to their stats, they said uh, it's, I received visitors from 225 countries around the world. And in their annual report, they had this to say about the blog. Basically, about 55,000 tourists visit Liechtenstein every year. Jeanshout.com was viewed 9,500,000 times in 2012. If it were Liechtenstein, it would take about 173 years for that many people to see it. The blog had more visitors than a small country in Europe. <laughs> I thought that was pretty cool. <laughs> According to uh, market research for market research from Impact Radius. I am the fourth most influential person in performance marketing today. Thank you. <laughs> During the 2012 Ad Tech trade show, Ad Tech uh, presents the Affiliate Marketing Award. It is like the Affiliate Marketing's Oscar. And I won the award for Best Marketing Affiliate Blog. Also in the same year uh, at the Affiliate Summit, I was, a, I was one of six recipients of an AFI Award. This is given to people and companies that have made tremendous contribution to the affiliate marketing industry. And this was uh, handed out at a party in New York. And it was the award was presented to me by Ice T and his wife Coco. <laughs> Ice T called it a giant butt plug. <laughs> I want a butt plug. <laughs> uh, according to adlinks.ca, uh, according to their status, I am the number one Canadian internet marketing blog. So, uh, quite a Pretty good size traffic and won quite a few awards and the award has led to a lot of media coverage. I've been in the New York Times, the Global Mail, the Wall Street Journal, uh, Entrepreneur Magazine, BC Business Magazine. I've also been on various TV shows like Breakfast Television, Vancouver 24 Hour, and I was a regular recurring guest on the Lab with Leo Laporte when Leo had his show in Vancouver. In 2007, I won the Performancing Awards Most Controversial Blog. That's one of the reasons I drive traffic. Controversy drive traffic, so I was very, very controversial. And I was so controversial that in this award, I beat up Perez Hilton. I got 99% of the votes. So, and they said, speaking of controversy, how did John get 99% of the votes? <laughs> and I'm not gonna stop how I did it, so I'll keep the controversy going. <laughs> WordPress, WordPress.com and WordPress.org maintains something called a showcase blog. And this is on WordPress, they, sh they show blogs that best represents what WordPress is all about, and johnchild.com is a WordPress showcase blog. Alexa.com ranks johnchild.com as one of the top 8,000 biggest sites in the world. I believe it's about 1,500 biggest in Canada, and about 3,000 biggest in the United States. The AdAge Power 150 list ranks me number 35, and of course, the, the blog, what the blog's famous for, going from zero to 40 grand a month in two years. I was a subject of a documentary uh, that was commissioned by CBC Television, and they wanted to showcase Vancouver's social media scene. So the CBC uh, basically followed the life, the week in the life of a company, Hootsuite, you all know who Hootsuite is, a university, Emily Carl University, and me. <laughs> so this is the uh, a little preview that they did for the uh, the show. And it, 
it was screened last night at South by Southwest, and it was it was screened before in Vancouver, Bureau, but now it's being shown in the United States. And this is the little preview of it. What we've seen in the past five to ten years since the advent of social media is that when millions of people have access to publishing, to online conversation, amazing transformations are possible. Social media has elected and overthrown governments around the world. Things like tagging, things like commenting, everything is built to be shared. It was a revolutionary point for me. When uh, my wife and I were having a kid, one of the first things I did before we named her, I made sure her domain name was available. I'm Dave Olson, and I'm the Vice President of Community at Hootsuite. I'm Alexandra Samuel, and I'm the Director of the Social and Interactive Media Center here at Emily Clark University. My name's Ryan Holmes, I'm the CEO of Hootsuite. I'm the mayor. Please, where's John Chow, causing coffee? I've learned you never know quite what to expect. Something weird's always going to happen. I'm fortunate that the internet, social media, internet marketing has allowed me to live this kind of lifestyle. We've been used in, in revolutions, we've been used in Occupy, and been used by both sides of the conversation. When I look at the scale problems that we've got in the world, the one thing that gives me hope is that the internet has enabled a level of conversation and collective intelligence. And so if we have a shot at dealing with these problems, it is through these conversations that allow us to share our knowledge and our thinking. I was told in the screening, in the screening last night, I saw myself where's that Sally still the show. <laughs> but if you wish to watch the full documentary, just go to this URL. It is posted on my Facebook, I mean, it was posted on my YouTube channel, but it is invisible. Uh, CBC owns the rights to the show, and therefore they, they do not want to make it public. But, so it's not shown, it's not on my YouTube channel, but this is the direct link to watch the show. And recently, I got a new ride. Mercedes-Benz that I got for free. That's right, 120,000 bucks, but I didn't pay for it. <laughs> okay. This is also the newest gadget of the week. And the cool thing about this car is it's a hot top, but it's also like a convertible. So let me show you how this, how this works, okay? All right, so let me take this off. All right, we're gonna drop the top here. Check it out. If you want to know how I got this car for free, uh, I will be doing several blog posts on how I did this, okay, and uh, how you can get yourself a Mercedes Benz as well. All right. In the meantime, Sally and I, we're gonna go for a drive and put the top down and have some fun. So, <laughs> yeah. all right, Sally's gonna get in. You like Sally's with pink Mercedes Benz hat? <laughs> Who wants to know how I got the cup for free? Yeah. yeah. All right, well, you're going to have to read the blog. Yeah, I can tell you. But, see this thing here? This is, a, this is an air vent on the headrest. That's an air scarf. It blows hot air onto your neck to keep you warm when the top's down. <laughs> and uh, these lumbar support, the left and the right side, when you turn this way, this side in place to hold you in place. You turn that way, the other side in place to hold you in place. The seat is heated air condition and has massage settings. Oh, wow. <laughs> so it's, it's, uh, it's, it's so technology loaded, I haven't figured it all out. It, it parks itself and it can tell if I'm about to fall asleep and it'll tell me to go for coffee. Make <laughs> <laughs> your coffee? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all 
I don't know. It might. <laughs> so, I, it wasn't always like this. You know, I wasn't born with money. I wasn't born rich. I was raised in a small farming village in mainland China. I, li I spent the first seven years of my life in this house. It doesn't matter if this house faces north, south, east, or west because, well, there's probably no windows. It doesn't matter for the views or anything like that, so, hey, come on inside. Check out this lock. Okay. This is the original lock. And it still works. This house was built by my great, great grandfather. It's been in our family for four generations. Uh, you know, four generations. You know, this house was in Canada, it probably wouldn't, wouldn't be up anymore, but it's hard as a rock. That's because it is a rock. <laughs> we have a stove where we cook. The wok goes in here. You put the firewood in there, stop the fire, and you cook. This is the well. Yeah, it's a lot smaller than I remember. Then again, when I was uh, here, I was just a little kid, so I guess it looked a lot bigger. But yeah, this is our only source of water, and you know, rainwater basically. This is the main living room. Again, uh, no windows, uh, no light. It's kind of like this is my room. I think I slept, I slept up there. I would climb up on this this ladder, which is not broken. But I would climb up there, and basically that's where my bed's up there. And I do have a little window and uh, candles for light. This is the walkway to the uh, main entrance. It's uh, just cobblestones. And, you know, I can't believe I used to walk this barefoot, but uh, <laughs> I did. This house has electricity, and so the only source of light at nighttime are these candles. They're not very, very bright. I, I think they're only maybe like 15 watts equivalent to a light bulb. So. I'm also wondering where the smoke goes to. Right, so you see the house and you see all the rooms, but you're probably wondering, where's the washroom? Well, we don't have one. But when I was growing up, uh, see the little corner, the little corner there? There used to be an outhouse. Uh, basically, you just, uh, you know, just go in there, so you, you do your business, and you just Put it away. Oh. Okay, so now you know where I came from, and hopefully after this you understand why I truly appreciate what I do have. You know, like uh, I, I don't take what I have for granted. I truly uh, give thanks every day to what I've been able to accomplish, to what my parents have done to you know to uh, get out of this country and you know enter into North, into North America to give me a better chance of life. You know, uh, you're an immigrant who's an English as a second language and uh, has terrible spelling and grammar. <laughs> if, if that person can uh, make a living out of writing, <laughs> then uh, really, uh, I don't think any one of you have any skills whatsoever for to not succeed. When I came to Vancouver, my family immigrated to Vancouver when I was seven years old. And beautiful city, one of the best city in the world to live. But uh, this wasn't Vancouver I grew up in. I grew up in the downtown east side. I was a latchkey kid growing up. I had a little brother to take care of. Both my parents have to work to make ends meet. Now looking at this, one could say I, my childhood sucked. But then I never saw it that way. You see, what I saw was I live in a house with a toilet that actually flushed. See, when you are presented with a situation, you can look at it two ways. You can see it as a problem, or you can see it as an opportunity. Growing up, I only saw opportunities. And the reason I saw that is because of my dad. He told me life is nothing but opportunities. And one of the reasons he worked his ass off to bring us to this country was so I could have better opportunities. He said, in this country, I could be anything I want to be. And of course, he wanted me to be a doctor. You know, typical Asian parents always want the kids to be doctors. <laughs> you know, these days, my dad has no concept of what I do. He just tells his friends that I sit in front of a computer and money comes in. <laughs> so that's a little bit about me. And 
What I want to talk to you guys today is about internet marketing, specifically email marketing. Because email marketing is basically the foundation of my blog business model. My blog, I call it the ultimate blog profit model. It's only four steps. And the most important of the step is the email marketing. The first step of my ultimate blog profit model is to capture the lead. That means anyone that comes to my blog, I try to grab the email address. After capturing the lead, I use an autoresponder sequence to form a relationship with them. The autoresponders is designed to do three things. Form a relationship, establish me as the authority on what I, just, what I talk about. Establish me as the authority. <laughs> and, last, and after they convince that I am the go-to person, I recommend products and services that will solve their problem. <clears throat> See, your readers or your customer have a problem. And if you can solve, if you, if you provide the solution, they will reward you for it. And if you can automate that sequence, instead of having to make calls and stuff, all the better. See, one of the reasons I'm able to work a couple hours a day is because my entire process is automated. And I use various tools to do this. And I'm gonna show you the main tool. Talk about capturing the leads here. Basically, when someone comes to my blog, I try to get the email address first and foremost. Stuff like Twitter, Facebook, all this kind of social media, joining stuff, sharing stuff, I consider those secondary. Those are support mechanism for me to capture email addresses. The easiest way to get someone to opt into my email list is by offering some kind of free incentive. In my case, it's my free ebook. When you go to my blog, you will see a offer to give you a free ebook in exchange for your email address. And I find that a free incentive works extremely well to getting somebody's email address. Before, when I didn't have a free incentive, and I just say, you know, subscribe for updates, I would get about five to 10 opt-ins a day. The instant I added a free ebook, it jumped to 50 to 100. So that's the power of a freebie. People want free stuff. Start your list from day one. If I made any big mistake when I first started, it was because I didn't start my list from the get-go. And the reason I didn't do that was because johnshell.com was a personal blog. I had all these other websites that made me the money, so, and the blog wasn't supposed to make any money. When I finally decided to monetize the blog, it was a year down the road until I finally added the email, email list. Had I started the list from the get-go, the email list would be twice the size it is today, and correspondingly, my blog income would be twice as much. So it's an extremely expensive mistake. Yes? I'm sorry, John. Uh, which uh, pop-up for the WordPress? Oh, we're gonna get all to that. Okay. We'll get all to that, okay. Now, I use Aweber as my email list provider. There are other email list providers, there's Constant Contact, there's uh, MailChimp, and, but Aweber is what I recommend, is what I use at aweber.com. And all the examples I'm gonna show here are done with Aweber. It is possible that the other email services can also do what Aweber can, can do, but it may not be. I haven't really checked them out, but I, I know that Aweber can do every single one of the features, and I'm gonna show. Yeah. How do you spell that? Aweber, A-W-E-B-E-R, Aweber. When someone goes to my blog, the first thing they see, of course, is the typical email opt-in box. And this is produced by Aweber. I got my freebie here. It is above the fold, so they see it without scrolling. It's in a clearly visible area. They ask this for their name, but they get email. They go, download my book, get it for free. Most sites have that. Very, very simple. But I use more than one email opt-in system. And I'm gonna show you a total of 10 opt-in systems that I use and the object is not to just use one, the object is to use as many as possible. Because it's just like advertising, the more exposure you get, the better it is for them to actually convert. So this is the first mechanism. The other thing I use, uh, it's called, oh, getting leads from blog comment. See, blog commentators are a great source of leads. And Aweber has an, a WordPress plugin that adds to your blog comment. So when someone makes a comment, 
disappears. Because you know, when you make a comment, you get into your name and email address, and then you make your comment. <clears throat> so this, pl this plugin adds a sign up for a newsletter. So they make a comment, they click submit, they have signed up for your newsletter. And they're probably the best type of people you want on your list because they're active, they're commentators. So that's, and in addition to allowing you to sign people up, com 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 allowing commenters to sign up, the plugin also integrates on the back end of your WordPress blogs. So in your WordPress dashboard, you're gonna, you have an Aweber box that will give you updates so you can see how many people uh, log in even. Yeah, but it shows you how many people subscribers to this list, subscribers subscribers yesterday and total subscribers. So you can find out how many people subscribe. It's a, and uh, it's it's a totally free plugin. And if you have an eWeber account, you have a WordPress blog, you can download this plugin and add the ability to add commentators to your list. Another feature of AWeber is called a light box. And the light box, well, what it basically does is the first time someone comes to my blog, if they're a first time visitor, after about 10 seconds, the entire blog blanks out and then this box appears. And this box will not leave until they click the X button. It's extremely annoying, but it's extremely effective. And it's annoying, so therefore, we said, I said a lifetime cookie. What? They only see this once. The next time they'll never see it again, unless they clear their browser cookies or they go to a brand new computer <coughs> that, that hasn't visited me. But this gives me about 10% opt-in. So it's, it's my, it, on the blog's various opt-in mechanism, this is the highest. And if you're not using it, I totally recommend you do. It's also integrated with Facebook. So a lot of people surf the internet while logging into Facebook. So if the person's not logging into Facebook, there will be a field to enter the name and email address. But if they are logging into Facebook, it already pre-fills with their Facebook login and they just have to hit register and they are opt-in. So it just fills up their Facebook email address. And the easier you make it for people to opt-in, the higher your opt-in rate. So they don't have to fill anything out, all they do is just push a button, you get your, your opt-in gets a lot higher. So that's the Aweber light box with Facebook integration. The squeeze page is, for lack of a better word, what it does is uh, its page is designed to squeeze the email address of a person. And this is what I use when I'm doing when I'm doing paid advertising. When I'm doing paid advertising, I never send them to my blog. The reason for that is because there's just too much information. There's blog posts, there's advertising, there's email opt-in, there's comments, and everything. So when I'm spending money, I want to send them to a squeeze page decided to do one thing, that's give me your email address. This squeeze page has an opt-in rate of 50%. One in two fills it out. And if I would have sent it to my blog, my chances is probably one in 10. Like with the light box, it's one in 10. This is one in two. So if you're spending money, you rather get one in two than one in 10. So, and this, this, theme, this uh, squeeze page was created with a, with a theme called Squeeze Theme at squeezetheme.com. And this is a this is a WordPress blog. It's just a it's just a theme. So you just all you get is fun information, add your video, hit go, and it, it produces this. Another way to get a lot of opt-in is with Facebook. And I use what I use a a service called Contest Domination at contestdomination.com. And what Contest Domination does is it allows you to set up contests on Facebook. So everyone here should have a Facebook fan page or a Facebook business page. So this thing will create a contest on one of the, one of the widgets on Facebook. And in this case, I'm giving away an Apple iPad. And the first time they see it, it's, it's grayed out, it's blanked out, they can't get to it. It says, please click like to continue. So they have to click the like button. Now you got one like on your Facebook business page. Once they click like, goes away, and now I say step one, please enter your name, enter your email address, click and enter the contest. Now you grab the email address. After they, once you click enter, it takes them to 
Step two, and he said, you have earned one unconfirmed entry. To make it confirm, please go confirm your email address. So once they confirm the email address, so they can't enter a fake email address, once they confirm, then they get one confirmed entry. And it adds a viral element. So if you want to earn 10 additional entry, share this on your Facebook wall, tweet it out to your follower, and share this on LinkedIn. And they'll get 10 additional entry. So these people are now sharing it and helping it spread so other people will come and view the contest and they'll have to click like to continue, they'll enter the name and email address, and then they'll be sharing as well and it goes virally. And all for the cost of an Apple iPad or whatever it is you want to give. When we did this contest, we generated 2,000 leads in a week. All for the cost of a $500 iPad. Well, actually, it didn't cost me anything because I won the iPad. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, I just we gifted. But every email to me in my industry, a email to me is worth $10 a year. All right, so 2,000 emails, that's worth 20 grand and 500 bucks. And they said, this, this uh, service called Contest Domination, really good service. Uh, made by a friend of mine in Seattle. Leads from webinar. Now, this is, if you do this right, it's fantastic, fantastic. Like, Amy Porterfield has a product on Facebook marketing. Very, very good product, sells for $97, and she sells it by webinars. And how she sells it is she contacts people with big email lists like me, or anything else. And she said, I have a product, it just, it's just, it's very targeted to your readership. I would like to put a webinar for your readers. And so you can send, I want, he, she wants me to send my readers to this webinar page so they can register for the webinar. Right? And during the webinar, she'll talk about Facebook, and then at the end, she would pitch her $97 Facebook product. And any sale is divided 50 50, 50, 50 between me and her. So my incentive is I make money, and her incentive is she makes money, but She's also building her email list. So I would, I would send her a few thousand people to register for this, and that's her email, just you registering. So if you have a product, and you create a webinar for it, you can use that as an email list building tool. Another way she does it, in addition to going to people with big email lists, she just goes to Facebook and does search for Facebook groups. In this case, uh, this is what I did. I, I found a Facebook group called Awareness Social Media Marketing Best Practice, and they have 33,000 members. So what she, does, what she does is she will contact the group's owner and ask him, how are you monetizing your group? And 90% of the time, they're gonna say, I don't. I just started a group and it just got big. And then she'll offer, well, how you like, I can put a webinar for your group, it's related to Facebook, and at the end, I'm gonna pitch my Facebook product, and I'll give you an example so you can see how you like it, and we'll split the money 50-50. And the person agrees, you know, he'll be advertising on his Facebook group saying, webinar with Amy Porterfield, go register here, takes it to Amy's uh, webinar registration page, they register, she's building her list, and she's making money. In addition to Facebook, she also goes to LinkedIn, and does a search on, just doing a search for groups on LinkedIn, I found this one, Facebook user groups. 38,000 members. The owner of this group doesn't, make, doesn't monetize it. He doesn't make any money from it. So she contacts the owner of the group saying, you got 38,000 people, you make any money from it. You, you, you're maintaining this group, you're putting in time, that's worth money. You should be paid for that. And she makes her offer. So this group would then, you know, like they would post webinar with Amy Porterfield, go register here, and 38,000 people, you think she will get a couple of thousand people registering? Nah. So this is uh, basically data mining within LinkedIn. Like, whatever your industry is in, you can create a webinar for it, then just search for groups in Facebook, in LinkedIn, or Google groups in your industry, find the group's owner, and just ask them how you're making money from it. And I can, I can, you and I can be in joint venture and do something, make some money together. And Amy has now built her list of over 50,000 people just by doing this. And it costs her nothing. And she makes money on it. So she's making money on the list, building the list. All right, how to get business card on your list. You see, you're at meetups, right? And you're changing business card. The thing is, 
you cannot add the email address to your list. The can spam rule of 2003 explicitly forbids you from doing that. They have to actually opt in and confirm. If you email those people or permission, you're, you're, you're spamming. Okay. So how do you get people's email address to, Aweber, to your email list? Aweber will not allow you to add it. I mean, you can email them with Google or Gmail, but you can't add them to an email list because of the, the, the spam rules. So here's a way around it. Uh, here's what I would do. What I would do is uh, I would create a new list on my Aweber account. I'll call it like VBN Meetup. And then I would put this opt-in box into one of my subpages, like johnchow.com slash VBN. And I could always put that in my iPhone, so it's available. And then when I meet somebody, and we're talking to the person, we discuss what we're doing, and I say, I could tell them, oh yeah, I, I, I do want to ask more. I said, I have a few, I wrote a book on, I wrote an article on this. They go, if you want, I can send you a copy. And they go, yeah, want me to send you a copy? Okay, sure. I'll send you a copy, so what I do is, pull up my phone, I, I enter the name and email address which is really against the rule, but I'll show you how this works, okay? So I enter the name and email just for them. I click Submit. Then what would happen is Aweber will then send this person a email to ask them to confirm, did you, were you the one who actually submitted the form? And what I do is I use a custom confirmation page. So instead of using the default confirmation page, Aweber allows you to write a custom confirmation page. So once I enter the name and email into my field, they will receive confirm your request for information. So I wrote down, hi, first name fixed. That automatically enters the first name. So hi, Joe, or whoever. It was great to meet you tonight at the meetup. You asked for more information about my business, and with your permission, I would like to send it to you. Please confirm you want my information by clicking the link below. I never spam people, and I always ask for permission before sending anything. Look forward to seeing you in a future meetup, John Chow. They click the link, they're on my list. And now you can now they're on your list. You can send them anything you want. How many have ever been to an event? Uh, event Pride is where you register for an event. Like when they did the Marketing Mastery Summit, it was sold via Eventbrite. But did you know that Aweber integrate with Eventbrite? It does that. Picture this. You're a baker, and you're looking to hold a tasting of some of your newest creations. Or a teacher, and you need to set up a lecture on a course you've just put together. Or you're involved in a charitable cause and want to plan a fundraising event. So you use Eventbrite to organize your event and gather attendees. Your event is awesome. You're engaging people, talking shop, and having an all-around good time. But then... Everyone leaves, and while the event was great while it was happening, once it's over, everybody goes home and that's that. Or is it? With the Aweber and Eventbrite integration, you can use Eventbrite to organize your events and gather attendees, while at the same time getting those attendees on a list so you can email them later. This way you can send important information to those attendees about sales, new products, and upcoming events. Those emails will go a long way to turning those prospective clients who attended your event into paying customers. Try out the Aweber and Eventbrite integration today. Just click on the My Apps link found in the upper right hand corner of your Aweber account. Aweber and Eventbrite is just one of the many apps that's built into the system. Aweber has apps that will integrate you with PayPal. So if you sell stuff on eBay and use PayPal to pay, when someone pays, they, up, if they pay by PayPal, they enter their name, email address, Aweber can capture them. It also integrates with a whole bunch of other stuff. That's just an example. And if you, know, if you organize an event and use Eventbrite, you should definitely take advantage of this to use it to capture the email address. Pre-pop list building. This is going to be a little complex, and uh, there's no need to understand try to understand about, try to explain the concept, and, and then we'll, basically, we'll try to explain the concept. But basically, a, a pre-pop stands for pre-populated. And what it is, these are offers made available from most of the affiliate networks, like Never Blue and Victoria. This, these ones are for market leverage. And what it is, they're basically the email submit. They're by companies who are trying to build the email list and they want affiliate marketers to help them build the list. 
And when if you can get people to subscribe to the advertiser, they'll give you money. That is how it works. So in this case, like Karen Kulam offer, they give you one dollar ninety per email. So if you can send this company an email, they give you dollar ninety per lead. They get dollar twenty and dollar thirty. So this is an example of pre-pop means you can pre-populate. So this is an example of a pre-pop offer. It's uh, for Louis Vuitton purse for free. So this company trying to collect the email address, and if I get someone to enter email address in here and they hit continue, I make a dollar ninety. That's basically how it works. And what most affiliate marketers would do when they get this kind of offer is that they would spend money on advertising, send it to this page, hope they enter their address, and hope the money they make is greater than the money they spend on advertising. That's affiliate marketing 101. Right. Pre-pop means that I can pre-populate the email address. And it's designed for people already with a email list. So if I had a, a purse blog, Assuming I have a purse blog, and I know someone who has a purse blog, and he has a list of 50,000 people, he can send this offer to his list, and he would send them to this page, and what, what would happen is Aweber would grab the email address of the person's email address, persons who received the email, and fill it in automatically. So all they have to do is just click continue, <coughs> and they make $1.90. So it's less work, they don't have to enter anything, just hit continue. But if you don't have a email list yet, there is a way for you to use pre-pop offers to build an email list and make money <coughs> at the same time. And that's how we do it. See, the typical affiliate marketer would buy advertising on Facebook or Google or any of the various traffic sources, and they would send it to this offer and they open pray that they enter the email address and so they can make money. And they hope that they're making more money than they're spending. And if they're making more money than they're spending, great, if they're not, well, they, they eventually go under. So, what we do, instead of sending the traffic to this page, we would send it to a pre-squeeze page, we call it. And we send to his page and say, act now to get a free Louis Vuitton purse. We give instructions, see? Enter your email address right here, click submit, choose the purse you want, and click continue on the next page, and then fill in the, all the information and enjoy your purse. So, when they enter the email address here, I get the email, not the advertiser. I get the email. And once it clicks submit, what I do is I then take that email address that was just I just capture and I pre-populate it into the second offer. So, and my instructions said click continue on the second page. So they click continue, I now make a dollar ninety, and I got the email address. So, doing it this way, I'm not trying to make money on this offer. I'm just trying to break even. Because if I just break even, I'm building my list for free. But in this, in this actual case, yeah, we would we were generating about 500 leads a day. Just building it up. And if we, would, we, just, we, just, we just aim to break even. That's all we do. So that's uh, called free pop list building. The Amazon list builder. This is a, it's a really sneaky one. <laughs> I have a friend who wrote a, a book on short sale. His name is Corey. And when you go to Amazon and you search for short sale, his book shows up number two. So he gets good traffic from that. Hope you're interested in short sale. And normally, you know, when you click on his book, you get the Amazon sales page, which we're all familiar with. You know, that describes the book and it shows sample chapters and stuff. But when you click on Corey's book, you will get the sales page, but notice that his sales page has an opt-in box. He put a, and we're not sure if this is actually against Amazon's terms of service, and we're too scared to ask. <laughs> it probably is, but we're, we're not gonna ask, and we just hope that Amazon won't pay any attention. If they ask to take it down, then we'll take it down. But uh, in the meantime, they can buy the book for four bucks, or they can register for a webinar, which sells a $2,000 product. And Corey's getting opt-ins for this every single day because people come to Amazon looking for a short sale and they're registering for the webinar. So, And here's Corey building up his email list and selling $2,000 products on the back end. Amazon list building. Now, the, uh, the code to do this is customized. Uh, like I said, because we don't know 
Amazon's view on this. We haven't actually made it available yet. <laughs> so, and uh, one, once we find out if, it's, if Amazon allows this, then we'll probably turn it into a product that we can make available. But, but until then, it's, uh, it's customized. But uh, really neat, it's really good. When someone opts into my list, or when someone opts into a normal list, the normal sequence is they opt in and then they get a page that says, you're almost done. Please confirm your email address. You know, by go checking your email and clicking confirm. That is the standard way of doing it. But you can control what goes here. After they click, after they submit the information, the default is to say, you know, activate your subscription. But instead of saying that, instead of sending them to the page that's asking them to activate the subscription, why not redirect them to a page that sells something? So that's why if someone signs up for my Ultimate Blog Copy Model ebook, instead of sending them to a page that says, thank you, please confirm your subscription, I send them to my blog on John Chapot that sells for $37. And you can set whatever page you want to send them to in your Aweber backend. But the default is the thank you page. You can do a video squeeze page, but there's also a, a field for custom URL. So you just enter whatever URL you want to send them to after they subscribe. So this is a way for you to make money from the subscriber instead of send them to a page that you sell something. Now, my product is also sold by affiliates. And in addition to selling myself, I have affiliates who will sell my product and they get 50% of the money. And no, normal affiliates, what they would do is they would send traffic right to this page with their affiliate link. And if they're buying traffic, they would buy traffic and send it to that page. But of course, when they do that, and so a customer buys, I get the customer. I get the email address. They don't. So some enterprising affiliates, what they've done is that they made a squeeze page. They made a squeeze page. Instead of sending traffic to my page, they send traffic to their page saying, Blogging with John Channel plus a hundred thousand dollar bonus. I don't know what the bonus they're offering, but enter your email address to get access. They enter your email address, get access, forward it to Blogging with John Chow, and if they buy it, they make commission of thirty-seven dollars. If they don't, this affiliate has a email address where they can hit them over and over again, saying, "Go buy the product. It's really good." So, this is a way for you, for affiliates, you, to grab the email address and not let the advertiser just get the email address as well. And I, I found them by doing a, a Google alert. Because I, I, I got Google alert my name and I get this and I, I go, I don't know who he is, but smart, smart. <laughs> HTML or text email. So which one should you set, HTML or text? And the truth, and the truth of the matter is there's no right or wrong answer. You basically just have to experiment and find out which gets a better response. So, and it's that I generally, when subscribers are going for the autoresponder, the autoresponder sales funnel, I generally like HTML. And when I'm trying to promote a specific product, I just like using text, because that's only the only product they only see. There's no other distraction. But that's for me. But you might be different, and you have to do it by just testing. And the way you do testing is to turn on AWeber email analytics. Always have it on. And to install it, you need to install a script onto your blog. That's how it tracks everything. And if you engage analytics, you can track sales, you can track download, you can track goals, you can track a whole bunch of stuff. And another reason you want it is that you can brand your links. See, a typical link from Aweber is like this, clicks.aweber.com. But if you turn on email analytics, the, the link becomes yourdomain.com. So it's better for branding. And once you turn it on, you get a whole bunch of stats. Like this example of uh, email stats here. It tells you the open rate and who care, how many people click, how many people open. And you can do conversions. If you put a value on the stuff you sell, you can track conversions, how many sales you made. You can say who opened it. You could also send, send uh, to people who did not open. So you can do a whole bunch of stuff by turning on analytics. Now let's go to uh, some advanced list, list build, list sending stuff. List segmentation. List segmentation basically means you got your main list, but you're gonna pull out a segment, a portion of the list. 
An example of why you want to do that, there are a lot of reasons, but one, ex uh, one example would be when someone is going through my autoresponder sales funnel, which is 30 days long, I want them to go through the funnel. I don't want them to send them additional emails to interfere with that funnel. Right? They're in my main list, and they go for the sales funnel, but when I want to send out, say I have a big announcement to make, I only want to send it to the people who has already gone through the funnel. Right? And the people that's going, that people that's going through the funnel right now, I don't want to email them. So you can, what you can do is you can use the list segmentation feature to segment out those people. So it's is how you do it. Uh, view segment, in this case, we're gonna date add it. So let's just say today, today is uh, the 14th, I want to go back a month ago, both came, so I would say date added is, well, that's from 2000, but basically I would do a month ago, I would add this date, and then after, and then they will produce the list of everyone that was added from one month ago, and everyone that's current in the sales funnel won't be added. Then I just save the segment, and then when I go do a email, I just go add the email that segment, and when the email goes out, it only goes out to people who has already gone through the sales funnel. And those people that hasn't gone through the sales, that's going still going through the sales funnel, will not get it. So that's an example John, of this segmentation. John, John yeah. can you explain a little bit more, I mean, I understand what you mean, but just explain a little bit more, like, what you mean your funnel, like, exactly, if you can? Well, I will get to the autoresponder sales funnel, so this is all, yeah, okay. I'll explain. Okay. Yeah, all right. so that's list segmentation, list geo targeting. Aweber has the ability to geo-target your email to based on based on where your subscribers live. One of the most powerful tools you can do, and it works really, really great for Thanksgiving, because you know Canada and U.S. have different dates, and I've received Thanksgiving Happy Thanksgiving email, and I go, it's not Thanksgiving yet. I'm in Canada, right? So, so what you can do, what you do is basically simple. You just go, you just create a segment from country equals United States, and then you send it Happy Thanksgiving to the United States reader. And then when it's Canadian Thanksgiving, you just go segment, country, it goes Canada, and you send them a happy Thanksgiving dinner, or a happy Thanksgiving email. That's, and if you're, like, I'm gonna be in San Diego for next month, or later, that, later on, and I wanna meet some of my readers, I just, it's San Diego, I just only send an email to the San Diego readers. So very, very powerful. Getting super personal. Everybody knows that you can always automatically fill in the name, like Dear John, it just automatically fills it in. Uh, you can do a lot more than that. You know, Aweber, you know, name, gives you the full name. You just enter these codes into the email template and it will like first name fix, mean just the first name with the correct capitalization. <laughs> just fill last name, so you say Mr. and automatically fill in the last name. But not only can you, can you have valuable for names, you can also do valuable for geotargeting. So you can say, hi, first name fixed. How is the weather in Geotag City? And it'll automatically fill in where they live. So if you, if you receive an email from me and I do that, it will say, hi, Josh, how's the weather in Vancouver? And I may fill it in. So it makes it sound really, really personal. And you can get it so personal that they will swear that you wrote it yourself. In addition to the other variables, in addition to the Geotag variable is the time variable. And this works great when, you, when you're doing your autoresponder sales sequence. See, my first email goes out on the first day, and two days later, the second email goes out. So instead of saying, expect my next email in two days, I can say, I'll email you again on day plus two. And it will, if it's Monday, it will automatically insert Wednesday. And if it gets, if it's, if it's Tuesday, or maybe it's Thursday, day plus two plus three or whatever you want. So you can, using these variable and there are a whole bunch of others in the system, you can make crap extremely personalized emails. These suppression lists, uh, basically that prevents certain people from getting your email address. Uh, if, no, it prevents certain people from receiving your email and this, it's really great if you have a sale. Well, oh, best example would be when my friend Shoe Money, I helped him sell his Shoe Money system. It costs $197 per month, and we sold a bunch of it. 
But then she thought that we could probably get more sale if we offer it a 50% discount. But the thing is, I already blasted my list at $197 a month. If I were to blast it again, and some people bought, and I would hit them again and say, it's 50% off, those people who bought at 197 were probably pretty pissed off. So what she did was uh, we used the suppression list, uh, not a feature of Aweber. And she <laughs> gave me the list of all the customer who purchased shoe money system. I added these email to the suppression list, and they don't get the email. So I added the email address, blast out, shoe money system, 50% off, go get it now. Those people saw it, they buy, those people who pay 197, they'll get the email, and they're happy too. So, so you know, if you, if, if you have your own product, and you sell it at a, and you sell it at the normal price, you sell some, and you want to make a sale, yeah, add those people who bought it to the special list so they don't get pissed off. Great feature. The blog broadcast, I get often asked, I, how do I create content for email? You know, because I'm creating content for my blog, I'm, and then I get created content for email. It seems like a lot of work. The blog broadcast is a way for you to have automatically create content for your newsletter. And what it does is blog broadcast. Or it takes the RSS feed from your blog. You enter your RSS feed here, and then it will take the info, take the feed from your blog, and it will automatically create a ready-made newsletter to send out to your subscribers. And there are a bunch of templates you can choose from. So in this case, uh, that's my RSS feed, and I set it to after, after there are 10 new posts, it monitors the feed, and once there's 10 new posts, it composes a newsletter and sends it out. You can set it for a number of posts, you can set it for like every seven days, just grab your RSS feed and send it out. So whatever you want. So it's a nice, easy way for you to automatically create content for your, for your subscribers, the blog broadcast. And Aweber is the only email service that actually has this. No one else does. Now the sales funnel, the autoresponder sales funnel sequence. When someone subscribes to my blog, they get a series of automatic email that goes out every single day, other day, a whole sequence. And those emails are designed to build a relationship with me and the subscribers, establish me as an authority, and then recommend products and services that will solve their problem. So the first time they come, they get a welcome to johnshow.com, and then they get other emails in the sequence. And most people, when they figure autoresponders, they make the mistake of having only one autoresponder. So they would put like, Sequence, they would add all their products to it. Like I'm gonna sell, and this email gonna sell this, email gonna sell that, this email gonna, this email's got some content, this email gonna sell. That's not the way to do it. People, get, people need to be reminded over and over again about what they, 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 people don't buy on the first email, usually. Usually you gotta hit them again. So, and if all, you, if all your audience responders just, this email offers this, this email's offer that, that's not going to do very well. What we do, the way to do it is to have multiple autoresponders. If when someone opts into my email list for the first time for download an ebook, they go into the prospect autoresponder. And the only thing the prospect autoresponder does is try to get them to start a blog. I try to get them to start a blog by using my recommended web posts. And if, and if they start a blog, they get moved to the customer's autoresponder. So if they, First email, they don't start a blog. Next email, say, gives you other, talk about advantages of blog and all this stuff until they finally do start a blog, then we move them. But the thing is, the can spam rule of 2003 says you cannot move someone from one list to another list. You can't do that. But there is a way around that. And how you do it is with automation rules. When, when someone signs up as a, when someone goes from my prospect to my customer's list, they usually will have to register for the product, so they would register for, for you new email address. So that's fine. But because now they're on my customer list, and they're also on my prospect list, and if, I keep, if they stay on my prospect list, they'll keep receiving emails saying, hey, go get a blog, go get a blog. They go, I already got a blog. Why do you keep sending me the stuff anymore? Right? So what I do is I want to remove them from that list. See, I, you're allowed to remove someone. You just can't move them. So, Using the Aweber automation rule, what I do is, 
I have the first list. And the rule says that unsubscribe from your list here when the least subscribes to the second list. So basically what I do is I will unsubscribe the lead from the prospect list if they register for the customer list. So now they go for the customer, customer sales funnel. And the customer sales funnel will try to sell them something else. And it will keep trying to sell them that product. And if they finally buy it, then we, we ship them again to the next list. We'll try to sell them something else again. And they won't get those other emails because they'll be unsubscribed from those ones. So that's, that's the way to do a proper autoresponder. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how we, oh, before we do that, cleaning the list. Then the reason you, you got to keep your list clean, the reason for that is the pricing, and all email service providers do this, the pricing is based on subscriber and unsubscribes. So if you, up to 500, 19 bucks a month. 5 million one, ten dollars. If you have 450 subscribers and you have 75 people unsubscribe to Aweber, you have 525 subscribers and that pushes you into the next bracket. So you gotta remove the unsubscribe on a daily basis. But in addition to moving the unsubscribe, you should do three other things as well. You should also remove the undeliverables because some emails don't get delivered. Why have them on there? They're costing you money. So you just go to the segment and you just undeliverable equals true. You'll produce a segment undeliverable email, click delete, they're gone. You should also remove your unconfirmed. There are people who will enter the name and email address, but then they don't go and confirm the email address. They, maybe because what they do is they can assume that, oh, you're not gonna ask for confirmation, I just want the freebie. They enter the name and email address, hoping they just get the freebie at the end, but then they get the thing that says, please confirm your email address, and they abandon. Those count as subscribers to the email service, and you should delete them, because they're never gonna get your email. If they don't confirm, they don't get your email. So again, just pull up the segment, get all the unconfirmed, who has not confirmed, delete them. The last group you want to get rid of is called the no open or the unopen. See, many people set up spam accounts. You know, they set up a separate email account just to receive free stuff. So they'll opt out, they will use that email address to opt in for the freebie, and then they get the free, they'll confirm, and then they'll get the freebie, and then they'll never check that account again. And this letter, so all the autoresponding email that you're sending to that account is not read. It's not read at all. So, and they're costing you money. So you should get rid of them. And what you, so what you do is, you create a segment to find email that has not been opened since a certain date. And generally, you, if it's today's date, you will go back, say, a month. So you go back a month, so, you know, because if, if, if someone doesn't open an email after a month, they're probably not gonna open. So you create a segment of an email from a month prior. Instead of deleting them, what I do is I would try a reactivation campaign. So I would email, I would create an autoresponder sequence for that segment and try to get, and try to get them to reactivate. I say, hey, you know, what? I haven't heard from you in a long, long time. Are you dead or something? You know, like, uh, hey, email me back, confirm. I got a freebie for you, click here. and try to get them to reactivate. And after the reactivation campaign, some reactivate, that's great. Those ones that did, that did not reactivate, delete them because they're never gonna open anyway. So by removing the unsubscribe, keeping the list totally clean by removing the undeliverable, the unconfirmed, and they know open, you keep your list super clean, you keep your prices low, and you're saving money, and your list is also a lot more responsive. All right, so I got some stats here from sending out 30 million emails. This is basically what happened, all stats. It may not happen to you, but I think it gives you a pretty good segment. You could use the information for whatever you, whatever you want. Uh, the highest open rate on clicks, highest openness and clicks generally occurs between 9, 9 a.m. and 11.30 a.m. on the weekdays. That's CST, Central Time. On the weekend, it's between 7 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. Those are the highest open rates and click rates. So when you do setting up your email, keep it, if you want the highest number of clicks, keep it within those time zones and you'll get that much better result. Most opens and clicks happens on a Monday. However, most people buy on a Thursday. <laughs> so the average time to buy, to average time to make a buying decision is four days. And this is what I, this is what I mean by autoresponder sequence. If you just have offer one product 
and then next year you may offer another product, you're probably not going to get a sale because it takes people have to think about it. They don't just buy when they get the first email. They need to be shown additional benefits. So first email one day, second email, third email, fourth email, all offer all pitching the same item, much higher chance of buying. Average time to, the average time to buy is usually between 7 p.m. and 10.30 p.m. That's when they mostly buy. Shorter subject line gets a higher open rate than a long subject line. Generally, the shorter your subject line, the better. Uh, the highest open rate ever achieved on one of our email, uh, not my one, but uh, Jeremy Shoemaker's one, uh, he basically his subject line was just, he used, he said, Jesus Christ. And it was the biggest open of them all. Totally unrelated to the email, but everybody opened it and got a lot of complaints and everything, but it worked. <laughs> and capitals on every word gets 25% less open than it was lowercase. So when you do your title, don't cap it. Keep it lowercase. If you, upper, if you uppercase every single word, 25% less open rate. So that's the stats we got from setting up 30 million emails over the past 11 months. This is a graph of email unsubscribe rate to frequency of sending. A lot of people assume that if you blast your list too often, a lot of people are gonna stop unsubscribing. But the truth of the matter is, the more email you send, the unsubscribe actually starts going down. The less email you send, unsubscribe a lot higher. And the reason for this is like, people subscribe, they want content, they want information. That's why if if more content equals more unsubscribe, then blogs like the Huffington Post wouldn't be in business. You know, they have thousands of articles every single day, but they have a lot of readers because people want content. So do not be afraid to email your readers on a daily basis. And mind you, it should be all pitching. If you're offering content, they welcome it and they will unsubscribe. I want to show how we put this all together in one of my products. Blogging with John Chow, it's a product I launched uh, back in December, and it, it basically, we used a total of seven, uh, seven autoresponders for this, for this product, for this website. So this is how we do it. The first is the affiliate page. We have a page for our affiliates. They're the people who help me promote this product and get half the money for promoting it. We ask them to opt into the email address so we can maintain communication, and we also offer the affiliates products as well. We do not unsubscribe any of our affiliates. We do, if they sign up for another list, we do, not, we do not unsubscribe them from this list. But every time I do a product launch, I get new affiliates. So my next product launch is coming out in a couple of months. I will go to the list of affiliates and say, hey, we'll launch another product. I get a lot of affiliates that way. So that's the first list. This is the product sales page. And there's an opt-in box right here as well. This is called the cart cart opt-in box. When they hit at the cart, they can't continue unless they enter the email address. The at the carts lower in the page requires no opt-in. It takes them to the order page. Now the reason I put an opt-in on the very top cart is because generally, if they click at the cart here without reading anything, they just want to find out what price is. So they're clicking at the cart to see how much it costs. So, and at that point, they see the price, and most of the time, they will then abandon the cart. So, I tell them, before you want to see the price, I want your email address. So they click it, they enter the email address, then they, go, then they add it to the add to cart list. Then they take, take it to the order fulfillment page where they see the price. If they buy it, they get unsubscribed from the list, and they get moved to the customer list. If they don't buy it, if they abandon the cart, the autoresponder sequence for the add to cart kicks in and say, hey, we noticed that uh, you were about to check out and you, you didn't. What went wrong? And uh, Seeker will try to get them to add the cart and get them to buy it again. It will make them offers and tell them why they should buy it or make them rich and that kind of stuff. And it will try to convert them into a sale. And once they buy, they get unsubscribed from that list and put it into the customer list. Now, when they try to exit this page, they present it with an exit pop. And they says, wait, don't leave yet. I have a special gift for you, just stay on a page. And if they click stay on a page, they get a page where I offer them a free report worth $27 called Five Devastating Secrets that 94% of bloggers always overlook. So then they can 
ask them enter your name, enter your email address to get this free ebook. And once they do, they get put into the exit pop list. And then exit pop list auto responder will then kick into effect. And until it'll, and the sequence will kick in until they buy. And once they buy the product, they get moved to the customer email. And in the customer email, there's a bunch of other autoresponder because we have we have two upsells in the product. You know, we have the main John, the blogging John Chow product. We have a monthly continuity, a monthly $47 per month membership uh, component. And we also have a $97 upsell as well. So depending on what they buy, if they just bought the $37 product, the autoresponder will try to set them to sell some of the other two. If they bought everything, then they go into another autoresponder. If they just bought like this, whatever combination, we have autoresponder for each one. Okay. And by doing this, basically, you know, this is the result. So, and this product, in the first month, we, we sold 3,500 copies, 500 people opt into the $47 per month continuity, and yeah, it's, it's done really, really well. I'll take questions after, okay? So, that's the reward of doing this, is you're gonna have readers that love you, you will grow your email list, and that's always a good thing. Daily sales of your premium product, because the customer is going for the autoresponders, and you're just trying to sell them products, and once they product, and you can keep adding these products. No need to worry about a Google slap, you know, Panda, Penguin, they smack you and your business is over. And I was banned from Google for four years. I was putting my blog. Yeah, because back then when I was trying to create traffic, I was pushing the limits of what you can do with Google. And one day I pushed too hard and they decided to uh, smack me. So four years I was off the Google search index. When you did a search for John Chow, I was not there. You found John Cow. <laughs> yeah, it's a parody site. <laughs> There's a John Howe, a John Buffalo, a John Chicken. Not John Chow, Chow Money. Hope it's a <laughs> so but for four years I was actually gone from the search engine. And a lot of people thought that this, this would be the end of me without searching your traffic, you know, how are you gonna survive? And I survived because I had a mailing list. I have a way to contact my customer. I, am a, I have a customer base that's so powerful and so big that I don't care what Google does. Penguin, panda, any kind of black and white animal, doesn't matter. <laughs> your earning per subscriber will increase over time. Because this, this sales funnel, this email list is dynamic, it's not static. You're always tweaking it. I'm always tweaking it. And as you, and as you tweak it, your earning per subscriber over time will increase. Right? So it starts off really low, but once you add more products, once you took the sales page, over time, every person that subscribes to my list is worth $10 a year to me. And I get 200 subscribers per day. And lastly, it's automated. Someone subscribed, automatic email starts going out, if they buy, they get shifted. If they buy that, they get shifted. They don't buy, sequence keeps going. Everything is automated. It's hands off, and it, I don't have to do anything. So that is the reward of setting this kind of system up. And thank you very much. <laughs> If you want to contact me, that's my information, wherever you mail, tell, link So John, you're going to field questions now? Yeah, if you want to get a few questions, but if anyone has, we can give away the book, you know, pass around a bucket with business card, maybe. Okay, okay, yeah, questions? Yes? What, what gateway, are you okay with PayPal as a gateway? I use ClickBank as my gateway, because my product is ran through ClickBank. So, and if I sell it, if I am, if I sell my own product, I use PayPal. Yeah, yeah. but I don't have, I, I don't bother with merchant accounts. I authorize the net, that kind of stuff. Yes. How do you find the free ebook except it works out? Because I've been hearing from people that it's uh, starting to get harder for people to opt in with just a free ebook because everyone's doing it now. It's still effective. Oh, I mean, if you want to be creative, you can. Yeah, like you're talking about the free ebook as an incentive to opt in. It's still effective, but the the best way to find out is just a split test. Set up two different squeeze pages, and one offering a free ebook, one offering maybe a free video, one offer or one offering a sometimes downloadable software, and see which one does better. So, and and if you with Aweber email analytics, you can find out which one does better. Yes. Uh, so this is 
gathering an email list is so that you can sell a product without the product you're going to make any money? Is that, uh, well, I'll just <laughs> forgive my ignorance. <laughs> uh, the guy, the, the, yes, basically, the email list is your customer base. Yeah. Basically, consider it. Just figure the, uh, your list as your asset. You have this list of, like in my case, uh, I, have a, I have a list of 150,000 readers. Okay. So this is, this is, a, this is a, an asset that I have. And this, hundred, this list of 150,000 readers, right, it's, what, uh, it's my customer base. It's like a retail store. They will come and basically, I just offer that readership products and services that will solve their problem. Yeah, if you don't have a product to sell, I recommend you just, use a, just sell affiliated product, just sell affiliate product. When I first started, I didn't have any product, so I just sold other people's product. An example, a host gator, web hosting is an example. I, I don't, I'm not the web host. I just refer the customer to the web host and the web host pays me money. Right? And so when you sign up for my, for my newsletter, the only offer you're gonna get is, let's, set up, let's start a blog for you. And if you don't do the first email, next email will say, advantages of blogging. If you don't do that, another email going, it shows the dot com web style. Hey, because of the blog, I have a Mercedes. You like a Mercedes too? Let's set up a blog for you. And until you finally actually do this, and why? You're gonna get 150 bucks a free coupon. You're gonna get 25% off, and I'm gonna install it for free. <laughs> so, and I get a 200 people subscribing to my blog every single day, and they go for this sequence. I sign up about four to six HostGator accounts every day. Yeah, once, it's, once I set the block with them, they now go through a second funnel. Because now they need web design. They need email. They need to host an email. Web. They need to sign up for AWeber. They need to create content. So there's a whole bunch of Exactly, you add all that stuff. And a lot of stuff, they're not my product. The other people's product, like WordPress plugin, pay plugin, they're not mine. I'm just an affiliate for them. So when you, you phoned A or HostGator and said, if I, then you, or did that? No, uh, well, that's the beauty of things. See, every most big companies have an affiliate program. HostGator has an affiliate program. You just go to hostgator.com. There'll be a link called affiliate. You click on that. You sign up, and they will give you a link that you will use that identifies that the lead came from you. So if they click on, if you refer someone with the link, and they buy, you get a commission. And now HostGator. Commission starts at fifty dollars. Depends on volume, right? right? It starts at fifty dollars to one twenty-five. If you can refer twenty-one customers a month, they give you one hundred twenty-five bucks per sign-up. If you can refer more, you can negotiate it. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes. How many uh, funnels? How many funnels do you have? How many autoresponders? How many autoresponders? How many funnels do I have? Uh, I really don't keep track, <laughs> but it's a lot. But it's it's it's, a, it's not a fixed number. Like I'm all, you're always, you always gotta be constantly testing. Sometimes uh, you find, you may find that your response might be better, but you you might get a better response by by removing a funnel. So, and this is why I recommend you always have analytics engaged so you can find out if it's producing results. If it's not, then you start adjusting. You add funnel, delete funnel, maybe change the email sequence. But uh, like I said on the uh, on the blog of John Chow product, there's currently seven funnels. How long does it take to set this up? Uh, realist, honestly, you can set up within a weekend. Uh, it's, just a, it's just a matter of mapping it out on a flow chart, saying that, okay, funnel number one, first email. And just drawing it out. Like, if they buy, move here. And just, it's just mapping it out. And then it's just a matter of creating, the, the biggest amount of time for me is actually creating the, the copy, you know, the wording, the copy. Because uh, copy is probably the most important thing, because you know, choosing the right word makes a huge difference in conversion. So the map of the funnel itself is actually very, very easy. As for margins of error, uh, I don't really see how there could be a margin. Like if someone buys something, it moves, unless the software or hardware actually physically fail, there's very little, very little margin for error. I guess they just need, they get the wrong email. They get the wrong email? Oh, that's impossible. It's impossible. It's impossible. Okay. It's impossible, because if, if people start getting the wrong email, there'll, there'll be spam complaints. And then if the spam complaint happens, then we're in a whole heap of trouble. Yeah. So no, uh, all these email service providers, they make absolutely sure there's possi no possibility of that happening. The newsletter is a great way to bring readers back to your blog. 
That's one of the reasons for If you don't want to sell anything, the newsletter is a great traffic building tool, a customer retention tool. Okay. When someone, if you have a blog, chances are the person will come to your blog either by a Google search or another blog linked to you on the story that you wrote. That's gonna be, if you're starting out, that's your main source of traffic, Google or someone linking to you. Well, so when someone comes to your blog and they read your article, they think it's great, fantastic, I really like this article. And then they leave, 30 seconds later, they forget who you are. And you lost that reader for life. They may, you, may, you may never see them again. But instead, if you were to have an opt-in box at the bottom of your article, after you finish reading, it goes, you liked what you read? Subscribe to my newsletter, or do you like what you read? <coughs> Enter your email address to get the free guide on how to do this. And if they subscribe, now you have a way to contact them again. It doesn't matter. If that customer leaves, you get, you create some great content, you can then hit your list, say, I wrote a new article on this and that, go read it, tell me what you think. Instant traffic. See? But if I want to promote one of my blog posts, I, I say I wrote a really, really nice blog post, and I want my read and I want it's traffic to it. I just type up an uh, email, so I wrote a new blog post on, uh, on my new car, and go check it out as a video. Here's a link. And you saw that graph, originally that graph you saw with a big humongous, yeah. That, that's because the email went out. Wait, and at, at uh, 9 o'clock, we're all going down. All, no, some of us are going, some down, of us are going down for a bite and a beer, or a cup of tea and a bite, or a cup of tea and a beer. <laughs> and John will be there too. I'll be there. So uh, this is a chance to ask John some more questions, but we have to move on.